Um, first of all, again, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a real privilege to hear the judge and to hear some of the people on the panel speak already. <clears throat> Unlike at least one of them, I'm not tired speaking about this subject. Uh, to be honest, this is the first time I've ever had the onerous task of representing victims within the police family. Uh, I'm out of my comfort zone. Normally I'm speaking about technical issues, so forgive me if it sounds a little bit um, uh, amateurish. But basically the, the invitation to speak for 10 and now 5 minutes uh, prompted me to think, who, who am I? I mean, uh, who do I represent? What right do I have to speak on behalf of the police family and the victims of the police family? And even if I'm only talking about myself, am I a typical police officer? Is there a typical police officer? Is there a typical victim within the police family? And of course the answer is um, no, we're all different. We're all individuals, we've had different experiences. I couldn't possibly uh, try to put myself in the position of people who have had much more traumatic uh, experiences than me. Uh, therefore, is there a single remedy? Obviously not, and I think that's the importance of today. We're talking about a range of options. Um, so it's complex, and I'll use the term duality, because every police officer, from the moment they put the uniform on, realized, certainly in the 70s, when you joined the police, you were given a dual role. You were to be a police officer and someone who's involved in counterterrorism or state security, or whatever terminology you want to use. Just to give you an example, in 1981, during uh, the, the week in which Bobby Sands died, I was in Derry dealing with um, severe violence and, and disorder. I was brought back to West Belfast and was shot at for the first time under direct gunfire. On the Friday, I was asked to take primary school children through the cycling proficiency test. So just to give you an example, we put a lot of pressure on mostly young men. It was a macho organization in those days, and of course, we paid the price. But it's very difficult to look at victimization or, or reparation within the police context, the Northern Ireland police context, without realizing there are these issues. Was, is there such a thing as the old police and the new police? Well, I wore both uniforms. I consider myself to be part of the PSNI, which incorporated the RUC when the change took place. Uh, and of course, there are individuals and there are groups and there are different lobby groups. So I think the challenge for reparation is to look at how do you deal with individuals within policies or within group situations? Um, if I had time, I'd tell you, but I don't. Um, simply to say that my father was a police officer, machine gunned, uh, his vehicle was hit by machine gun fire at the age of 61 in the last year of his service. My mother was in injured in the um, Good Friday explosion in Oxford Street, walking past the bus depot. Uh, I myself, from year one, um, served in the RUC in both capacities that I've described, both as an ordinary cop and uh, occasionally dealing with riots and all the other stuff. And uh, I was involved in leading change. I was the program director for the change management team. So I'm and straddling a lot of camps. And as I get older, I'm now retired 10 years, uh, it's about reflecting back and hopefully contributing something to uh, the future. But I'm not a victim. Despite the fact that I've been shot at twice, I've been blown up, I've been hospitalized, I've been beaten up, I've had bereavements, close colleagues killed, lots of trauma, but I'm not a victim. I have the luxury of choosing not to be, but a lot of my colleagues and a lot of their families, they didn't have that choice. They are victims. So how do we deal with them? Well, first of all, what, what would I need? Or what do I need? It's, it's just fairness. I'm not a, a demon. And those who demonize the police or dehumanized us have called us that grotesque title of legitimate target. I'm not a legitimate target. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. I'm a son. I'm a brother. So it's about fairness and not being labeled. And it's about balance. We all have the need, and I, I think probably whatever side of whatever camp you come from, these titles probably apply to you as well. So it is about acknowledgement that things went wrong and not one group has to take all the blame. What do all the members of the police family need? This is my stab at it. I think they do need fairness. They don't want to be judged through the lens of 2014, what happened in the 70s. It's like coming to Queens and say, why did you train in a didactic manner? Why did you use talk and chalk when you should be using modern technology and PowerPoint presentations? It's very difficult for police officers now to be judged for what they did in the 70s under abnormal situations. Justice, over 200 police murders are still to be solved, if they ever will be. So if I had time, I'd go through all this. And what I would say is in terms of balance, 
I have the great privilege of being an RUC George Cross trustee. We get money to maintain a memorial garden. We have an oral history project. We have a, a new museum that will be built. And the idea is to mark the sacrifices and honor the achievements of the organization and the individuals. So for me, these are some of the things that I uh, uh, would expect, acknowledgement and acceptance, that we weren't all heroes and we certainly weren't all villains. But the, this is easy for me to speak. I'm not a member of the Widows Group or the Wounded Families or the Disabled Police Officers Association. So I'm very conscious that this is me, Stephen White, talking. Finally, if you ask me about remedies, people have said much cleverer than me who've spent a, a lifetime in academia and in other uh, uh, walks of life trying to work out what are the correct ways to have reparation. Uh, and for me, there are principles, there are practices in restorative justice, even leadership principles, how to deal with individuals and teams, partnerships, mutual respect, countering the narrative. How do you counter someone's narrative which is the opposite to you? Well, of course, the answer to all of this is openness, dialogue, and honest engagement. And I think today is uh, certainly playing a part in that. So thank you very much. Cheers.